there's a team now from the Czech Republic who I would call Sharu, but Do we have to talk about these guys? Well, hold, hold on one second. But Subby scold on from um, <laughs> YouTube on our Formula 2 2023 video commented, I'm sorry, but that was the worst pronunciation of Sharu I have ever heard. Even though I'm copying what the commentators are saying, it's Charouser. But I don't know. <laughs> Trouser? I don't know. He's trying to spell it out. C- K H A dash R O W dash Z. And I don't know what that is meant to sound like, but the team from the Czech Republic, and he says he is from the Czech Republic himself, but Chirouts, I don't know. I feel like a commentator now. I don't know how to pronounce this. One, Josh, most importantly, how would you pronounce that name? And then two, Enzo Fittipaldi, um, let's go and give this guy a pat on the back. Yeah. <clears throat> Uh, how did you pronounce it? Trouser? Was it? <laughs> Charouts, <laughs> maybe. I don't. I don't know. Charouts. Uh, I, okay, I, I would I, say. I, 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 I'll, 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 get, I'll be fair to this guy. Charou. Um. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. There, there seems to be a team that seems to foster in pay drivers in F two and F three. Like, I remember like seeing some comments about their postseason test. And a lot of the comments was just like, this is not a serious team. <laughs> so it's not, it's not good when you have a lot of names in there where it's just like, okay. Well, let me interrupt for one second, Josh, if I might, because we've got Enzo Fittipaldi, who's done unbelievably, one of the stars yeah. of the season, in my opinion, but I'm not going to force that on you guys. But then we also had Chen Bolt Bassi, who has got a very different sort of route to motorsport than a lot of people. Then... Uh, what I'd call cameo appearance, David Beckman, Tatiana Calderon. We're going to move past the latter two, and we could focus a little bit, but it's really Enzo and Bolt Bassi. We're Enzo, going to focus yeah. On. Yeah, but yeah, Enzo um, Pitali, yeah, and Bolt Bassi. To come back from what he had in Jeddah, you know, and mm-hmm. especially the other things that were involved uh, with him on a health side, um, it was you know like. There have been some disparaging comments about uh, Enzo this year and with regard to um, saying not that special, blah, 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 blah. Uh, he destroyed his teammates. You know, you got you to factor in that. It's like, you know, you left them for dead. Um, his consistency was something else, you know. Um, no wins to speak of, no pole positions. Uh, but at the end of the day, he was still like, up until that last round, he could have gotten third in the championship, mm-hmm. you know, and an inner shrew or a trouser or whatever you call it. <laughs> um, but yeah, seriously though, like we have got to give him kudos in that regard. Was he the driver of the year? No, but you know, still though, you've got to give uh, credit where credit's due. I know people will be thinking, well, you know, wasn't that special? Well, I mean, he did what he needed to, and he got the results that he should have. Uh, but next year, rumored to be at Carlin with Zay Maloney, he's going to find that hard because he might, Maloney, he might. No, he might, he might, but I don't know. He is going into the lion's den a bit there. But, you know, at the same time, Carlin's got good speed. You know, they proved that this year. They've got good car speed, especially in the sprint races. So he may shut me up. A couple of drivers did shut me up this year. So, you know. Your thoughts on, well, Trouser, the team, and Fittipaldi, I suppose, mainly as uh, the star attraction, Tyler. Yeah, Fittipaldi had a great season. Sheru, Trouser, whatever you want to call them, they actually were a much better team than anyone would have expected from them this year. And um, I think even to a lot of people, um, they don't realise just how good they were. Um, I think the biggest issue with saying how good Fittipaldi's season was, regardless of everything we've talked about, and he deserves a lot of credit for those things, is that because his second driver, you know, the, the pairing that he was with, was always below average for an F2 driver, uh, in my opinion, it meant that you, we didn't get a good representation of how good he actually was, um, which is why I think that, Carl was actually really quick anyway. Um, but you don't have a season like that. You know, he, I mean, the thing is, he came in from F3 halfway through the season into F2 
last year. When does that ever work unless it is a genuine top, top driver? Mm-hmm. You can't just go straight into a series adapt. People, some people say the F2 car is different to the F3 one. Some people say it's not too much. My point is, is that it still matters if you come in and do that. And then he's done it again this season. And he is the, um, the best performing driver on the grid that hasn't won a race. Mm. Um, and there's always that question, can he do it then? Or is he always just taking advantage of opportunities he's getting? I think a bit of both. Um, as Josh mentioned, next year with Zane Maloney, he came in and he was fighting with like guys like Novelak already straight away in Abu Dhabi. It'll be a really good opportunity to prove himself. He's also a Red Bull. So <laughs> there's that added element of pressure as well, we've got to remember. Um, we saw how much he was being paraded around by Helmut Marko. I mean, some people swim, some people, <laughs> you know, some people sink. So he's got the Fittipaldi name. It should be written in the stars, but, you know, it's a question of how good it really is he. That's what it's next year's about for him. Well, half of the Fittipaldi's grid have got the Fittipaldi name, so let's not focus too much on that. But also, Chen bolok Bass, we've not really touched on on a sim driver doing what we all dream of doing and joining single-seater. Tyler? I just want to just quickly on Bolt Bassi because there's a lot of distasteful stuff in regards to his exit and with the Sharu's, you know, bosses and he's been um, pretty vocal on like Instagram and Twitter about the fact that he's going to make a return very soon. And obviously it doesn't look very likely that that's going to happen at Sharu. Um, but he has had an amazing route and it's, I hope, given a lot of hope to people, even if it is somewhat unrealistic in a lot of ways, I hope that it gives people hope in motorsport because when you have people coming from a, you know, a different background, it, it's great. It offers that sort of element of diversity that creates chaos in motorsport, which is brilliant. Um, whether he's actually good enough to be there, I would have liked to have seen him in F3 first. I always like to see drivers properly proving themselves. So stepping up like that, it's always going to be a hindrance. It's the biggest step we've had into F2 for a while. Um, but, you know, he did well in Euro Formula, so fair play to him. But, yeah, it's just not it's not worked out for him this year. And my grades can be quite low, so. Um, normally, the progression is, you know, FIA F3, and he didn't do that. Um, so, it's difficult to judge his season, really, you know? Like, can you really be that, you know, cruel on him? At the end of the day, he was in no man's land. Um, <clears throat> bit of a ghost in some ways, but you know, like, what were we expecting of him to come in and superman the field? No, so and then he ended up doing doing only half the season. So what we ended up with sort of was sort of a, a half campaign that really didn't achieve a hell of a lot and didn't aid um, the team and. And in, in, in much of a capacity. Meanwhile, Enzo's up there, you know, fighting for a top three position in the championship. It's like the contrast is night and day. But, you know, at the same time, Enzo definitely has had that sort of experience, I guess, in a Formula Two car in the team, you know, in the, in the lot, in the sort of, what do you say, in a proper progression up, got the people around him who can help him in that regard uh, versus someone who only did a half campaign and you know first season in the car i don't know it's it's just difficult to to sort of adjudicate adjudicate how bolabasi's season was is he going to be around that kind of c minus level is that where we're thinking it's going to land Are we yeah going to i think c minus yeah tyler concur My bad. i was on i was on mute i was thinking d um I think could we say D D plus because I really don't think I can give him a C. It was a it was a nice fairy tale s- story coming into the season. I think it's definitely not gone anywhere near that since then. Um, so I think can we say D plus for that? Yeah, and just you know we talk uh, you know we're talking about the fairy tale uh, entry into the season. You know, esports to Formula Two. It's not quite that simple. There's not many drivers who you can legitimately say went from esports to to racing. There's a lot of asterisks and a lot of those stories. Yeah, I think we will get a sim racer at some point in the future, but I just don't think that's been what Falk Bassi has been this year. And I think we all really wanted him to be that driver, right? Because that kind of represents us, the everyman who we tried to think, you know what, I could be a Drogovic myself if only I had the money to do so. So, yeah, I think we're going to Hey, we, we still got Jimmy Broadbent. 
And he's doing it, in all fairness to Jimmy as well, uh, we like Jimmy, that he's kind of doing it the right, he's doing it slower. You know, he's not going kind to of say Formula 2, I'm going to jump straight into that. And he, he's proving that it's possibly a thing to do, just Formula 2 isn't the way to go about it. But I think D plus is pretty damn fair. But Fittipaldi, let's go down that route, Josh. Fittipaldi, we, like you say, he's not the best driver of the year. He didn't get a win, but a bit of a surprise package, I'd say. B plus. I don't really have much to add to that, really. Oh, you, you spoke Go on, give him well, an A. Then. Give him an A. <laughs> Tyler, B plus, are we thinking? Uh, it, my thought was literally A minus B plus. Um, the question is, how did you think of Fittipaldi before the season? If you thought of him, you know, not that much, then A minus. If you thought of him a bit more, maybe, then B, um, B plus. I'm going to give him an A minus, just because I think that he might have a bit of a tough year next year, so... Want to give him as much love as possible for what is going to be a very, very important one in his career. You just know that he's going to turn up to the first round, and if he doesn't get a pole position, Marco's going to call him up, call him up and ask, "What is this? You're in Liam's old car, and like you should be getting top results." Yeah, because we know that Marco is historically extremely tough on his uh, on his talents. It's either B plus or A minus. Josh, I think you're the one who's got the casting vote particularly because Tyler's happy with either. Uh, yeah, so rating for uh, 30. Um, yeah, B plus. I'll stick with that. 